What's up, guys? This is Adi again. Surprise, another deep dive. This one, for sure, is going to be the last deep dive of the summer window. A little bit of a surprise as we get the announcement from Nikos Kotsis earlier today at the time of recording. We reported this to you guys a couple of days before the announcement that it looked like Julian Bianconet, the center back that is going to be coming to Olympiacos, would be joining us. And he is flying in as we speak. And he should be presented tomorrow, uh, again, based on the time of recording right now. But before we get into this, though, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. All of the engagements, all of this helps us continue to find and really help grow the community. You guys want a bigger community, and so we, so do we. So don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Help us grow the red and white and find more red and white fans out there. Additionally, if you want to support us on Patreon, you can check us out on patreon.com. You get early access to these scouting reports. They may be finishing up, but in the winter, there will be more scouting reports, I'm sure. Plus, you get two extra episodes at least a month. We do special interviews. We have an interview coming up with the ex-president of Huracan, the club where we just signed Santiago Ese from. So get some great insight from, from a president like him. And we are going to be doing interviews outside of the realm of Libyago, so you can support us. We also have enhanced analysis. More content is coming soon, and support us on Patreon if you want to check that out. Now, let's get started, ladies and gentlemen, with Julian Biancone, who is going to be one of our new center backs, giving us a little bit more depth, uh, not just as a center back, but in the, the, the back line area, we will say. Uh, 23 years old, he played... A lot primarily as a center back for Troy A, but he's played as a fullback position for Nottingham Forest. He's played as a fullback also at Monaco. He It looks like he even started out as a fullback traditionally, but he can play all of those positions, very versatile, and can fill and plug holes for us uh, at Libyacos. He comes in at about six foot two. 187 centimeters tall, 79 kilogram or 174 pounds. So he's a pretty big boy, uh, all things considered. Um, a Monaco product that I mentioned before, he went to Troyer in France for about two and a half million euro. Uh, that was a few years ago. And he moved, as you know, last year, he moved to Forest for 10 million uh, before being riddled with injury. Uh, something that I will jump into in a little bit. As far as the player's profile, he is a strong ball carrier with an offensive presence, something I'll elaborate on a little bit. Capable of carrying the ball forward on his own. He can When he's playing wide or playing central, it doesn't matter. Um, he's not afraid to get forward with the ball, whether he's playing as a center back or on the wings. No nonsense. You're not going to see too much flair, uh, but he does take his space, and he has pretty good control over the ball, and he's a physical guy. Uh, another disclaimer with the data, this is a deep dive with yet another disclaimer because we have yet another player that last season really didn't get a lot of minutes. And Julian did tear his ACL in November of 2022. So he spent a lot of time injured. He's coming back. He's healthy. But the data provided is from his time in France. So I am. Uh, I compared him to center backs as well, and not fullbacks. Um, despite the fact many people see him more as a fullback, because I see him filling in the role that we all discussed, we're very thin at at center back. So that's why I compared him to the center backs. Uh, one because he played primarily as a center back for Troye, and two because that is where I see him filling in. So just some quick little disclaimers about that. Uh, now. Let's go ahead and get moving into the player profile. Let's have a look at goal creation. Um, compared to other center backs in France, his one goal that he scored in that season uh, did put him in the top 65% of the league uh, for center backs with goals scored. So that context may not seem super impressive to you, although it looks pretty good on the goals per 90. Um, he did get himself into a lot of scoring opportunities and especially off of set pieces. He is a physical presence, as I've mentioned before, and he had a penchant for connecting with the ball in the penalty area. Uh, very high XG um, among other center backs. You can see there, I mean, we're, we're getting close to the nineties, uh, but close to the hundred percentile in shots, sorry, above the nineties, I should say. So a lot of volume for a center back. 
uh, indicates not just high quantity of his opportunities, but also the quality of chances as well. And this is a positive thing because this is a statistic we have not seen in a center back for us at the very least of the players coming in or what we have there since Socrates left. So just a little bit of context. Uh, assists and shot creation. Uh, key balls are primarily coming when he's playing out wide. Plenty of crosses, pretty decent accuracy, all things considered. A lot of ground balls, not just into the penalty area, but on the far side of the penalty area where the runners are coming. Plenty of short dumps if he goes to the byline. Um, even as a center back, he's not afraid to get forward and get involved with play. But it can be a little bit concerning because you do see him sometimes get a little bit pinched too far forward and it can leave um, a little bit more vulnerable, the defensive line that is. I can't imagine that this is something he's going to be allowed to do under Diego Martinez, but still, just to something that I noticed. He also, I watched him play more than a few really nice through balls cutting the defensive line, almost like Semedo, Semedo style, I should say, uh, playing a winger quickly, whether it was also deeper and higher into the field, just playing a nice long ball through. So that was really cool to see, not something I expected. Um his shot creation will definitely depend on where he's going to be rotating through, whether he's rotating as a fullback or whether he's playing as a center back. So other than that, we're probably only going to see that type of buildup or shot creation, goal creation, you name it. We're only going to see that type of end product probably on set pieces for him. But you never know. Maybe we see him play more as a fullback and less as a center back. Uh, regarding passing and buildup, I never really saw him heavily involved in possession one way or another. Um, part of that is because, especially as a center back, he plays a lot of long balls. Uh, almost reminds me of uh, Cisse, who would constantly be launching the ball forward in an irritating manner, just hitting it forward, especially with pretty low accuracy. You get the feeling just looking at the data, and you can see in the buildup section, which is up at the very top there, um, look how low his pass accuracy is. And most center backs are going to be in like the high 80s, low 90s, but he's in the 70s, which isn't, isn't good. And it's hampered down by the amount of long balls that he's sending, uh, which is holding down his overall pass accuracy. So due to the high volume of those um, and due to the fact that he hits the ball long so much, it kind of prevents him from being part of build up because if he's not playing the ball forward and, and kind of getting into the mix with the midfield, then they're, then he's not involved in build up. If he's just launching it forward, then that's it. So it, it makes sense in that respect. Now, on the other hand, the pass accuracy, as I already mentioned, does look poor because of all those long balls. But when he's playing as a center back and he's not getting the balls forward, it's not like he's misplacing them here and all over the place. No, it's just because of the amount of long balls. Um, but uh, he, he can play the ball and he can do interplay with his midfield. He can get forward, drop deep, and and even alternate sometimes with with the midfielder that's kind of playing as like the, the stopgap between the midfield and the defensive line. So he can do that. And I can't imagine the long ball part of the game will be acceptable from Diego Martinez. Otherwise, he's not going to play. He'll be allowed to carry the ball forward like we've seen the Retros do in the beginning of the season, but uh, only in the aspect that as he's going to be a link to the midfield. So that being said, with what we've seen so far and what I've seen in, in his buildup and possession of the tape, it's probably the closest thing to a ball playing back we have besides Retzos. So in that respect, it, it, we, we have an alternate option, whereas before we were all wondering if we had anybody that could resemble that if Retzos got hurt. Moving on to the defensive traits, uh, he does have a great, uh, ground ground game. Julian Bancon is uh, great closing down runners and players with the ball. Off the ball is pretty good, monitoring his runners as well. He doesn't seem to be overly effective when it comes to anticipating balls. So like you don't see a lot of interceptions with him. In that middle section, you can see his, his interceptions. It's very low compared to other center backs. So um, something to, to just be aware of there. But he is an aggressive, pretty aggressive bulldog. I mean, if he's in a CB pair, He's going to be out there pressuring the ball with the other center back playing off of him. And he's a pretty big body, very physical, solid speed, keeps with his marks and following wingers running down the line. Set piece defense, he's also pretty effective. Not amazing, but certainly above average. 
compared to what we have on defense, at least, he does represent something a little better in the air than what we have currently. Very physical with defenders on set pieces, and that's where we see kind of him draw some cards here and there. Slight concern, but not really on the level of Usain Uba, where we're starting to panic and pucker up every time he gets the ball or every time he's in a defensive situation, I should say. And speaking of Ba, maybe we bring Ba in here for a little bit of a comparison. You guys love the comparisons, and I got a fresh radar chart here for you comparing uh, Julian Biancon to Usain Uba. And I wanted to make this comparison because Ba is, one, he's the most recent outgoing uh, defender uh, from Libyakos. So I figured, you know, let's let's see if we are replacing what's going out and if it leaves us in a better position. And another thing is Ba actually looked pretty good last season, all things considered. Um, when he did play, especially towards the end of the season, especially defensively. So I wanted to, to use that also to highlight the difference between what Ba offered and what Biancon offers. Ba's defensive traits are on par or better in all respects. I mean, you can see in the in, in defensive duels, and this is not just like in the terms of volume of duels, but also in the percentage of, uh, of duels won. Ba is a better defender overall than Biancon because Ba also is pretty good with block shots, get, getting in front of those. And Biancon, as you saw in the previous section, the previous set of data, you don't, he doesn't really block a lot of shots. Um, Ba's intercepting the ball. He's better at reading uh, than Biancon is. But when you look at the more offensive qualities of a defender or a center back, and again, this is partly because he has played fullback before. Biancon is a better ball playing center back. Not afraid to dribble against the uh, de defenders. Not a, sorry, not afraid to dribble against players or whoever's pressing him. He's pretty press resistance in that uh, respect. A lot of volume in the penalty area. Uh, ha has an offensive set piece presence, whereas Bob definitely does not. And that's where you really see the differences and the divergence of this radar plot here because anything that's involving possession, anything that's involving any kind of end product in the final third, he's on a different planet than Usain Uba. And this is also in a top five league. Now, the major plus when comparing the two and what he offers with what we lost with Ba is the lack of card risk. Well, Biancon isn't averse to getting a card. I brought that up earlier, and you could see in the data, it's not like he was at the higher end not drawing cards. No, he was. he's one of the guys that drew more cards among center backs in France when he did play there, but he's still way less, way less risky than Ba. Um, coming to us after playing in France and the English top flight, no matter how briefly he played with Nottingham Forest, is still a better resume builder than what Ba came in with coming from League Two. So if we're comparing the player to what has left us and determining if he puts us in a better position than we were before, especially in the in, in this aspect, I would say yes, uh, at the very least. So bringing that uh, into consideration, let's let's get to the verdict. You've seen the data. I compared him to Senu Ba, and you, you see that he's a little bit different prospect than Ba is, and. Before giving you the actual verdict, this is a very nuanced and if-filled last-minute transfer. What I mean by if-filled is there's a lot of ifs. If he'll be healthy, how's the knee? Is he match fit? If he's match fit. These are all the things that we talk about. When we first broke news of this transfer happening, when we saw it in The Athletic a couple days ago, we weren't overly excited with it. Because one, it was yet another player coming in from Nottingham Forest uh, that was recovering from a bad injury. Now, the difference between this and Omar Richards is this is a, a, a permanent transfer. This is a transfer that we're getting from Forest. Alibiakos, after the business that's been done, is capped on the amount of loan players that we have. We cannot loan another player in. So this was a permanent transfer. We brought this guy in. Uh, the fee hasn't been announced yet, probably won't, but we brought him in and he is a permanent transfer to Alibiakos. So we are rehabbing a player that will belong to us for the foreseeable future. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, Bianco tore his ACL in November of last year. So he's probably training at full speed at this point uh, because the recovery time following surgery is 
you know, for, for non-athletes is they give you about a year. But for athletes, we see them returning in six to six to eight months. So he's definitely training at full speed, but I doubt he's going to be match fit coming in. I, I probably wouldn't expect him to be match fit probably until end of November uh, at the earliest. So in the short term, he's obviously not going to be on the European list, but he'll be able to cover and provide depth in, in games in Greece, especially as the schedule continues to get a little bit dicier and a little bit more hectic. So we'll see what happens. Um, I can only see him coming in maybe for a cup game and or maybe against lower team teams, lower table team games, at least until the break. Uh, maybe in the future when the coach inevitably loses faith in Freire because I'm still not sold on him. Maybe we'll see more of him while the likes of Porozo and Doi are developing. So maybe we'll see that then, assuming he's healthy and assuming he's recovering well. So that being said, with all the risk concern, I'm, I'm giving this about a half thumbs up. We've been talking about how we still felt thin at center back. So it is a last minute transfer, shoring up an area where if we looked at all the positions, that's probably where we're the thinnest. He's got experience in the top five leagues. He's coming to us for very little. And he is a talented player. But again, I do not like the number of ifs. We already now have multiple defensive players with injury concerns. Banos Retzos, love him. And he's playing amazing right now. But we all know he is an injury risk. We are hoping he stays healthy because he's the best defender we have currently, the best center back. But part of me believes he's going to get hurt sooner rather than later. Richards, Aloni coming back from a series of really horrible injuries last year. Another if. And now beyond Cohn. This is just the defensive line we're talking about here. So many injury risks, especially in the center back position. It's a last-minute deal, probably one that's more of a financial deal for Forrest than really a benefit to us. But we're still going to hope for the best because, like I said, the talent's there. And our training team has already performed a miracle with Retzos. So it does give me hope that we can rehab him and Omar Richards while we're at it uh, and get ourselves some, a, a player that gives us real value. This guy gets healthy. This is value. I mean, he's young. He's 23 years old, and there's talent there. Uh, great value to be had if this guy can get healthy and get some regular minutes in. Anyway, so you have the verdict. It's about a half thumbs up considering the risks, considering um, – you know, we probably would have wished that we would have had something better earlier on, but it is what it is. Uh, and and that's the business. The, the business all in all has been pretty good. It doesn't change the grade that I shared with you guys in the last live show. Regardless, I'm still giving this an A-, minus, uh, closer to an A because for the fact that we brought a body, and even though it's a lot riskier, but it's sticking to that. So thank you guys for tuning in to the last deep dive of the summer window. Maybe there's a surprise because the free agent window closes September 15th, but I doubt it. The club might have faked me out with Jovetic, but we get to enjoy now. See the project that's being built. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you got a chance to learn a little bit more about the player as well. So thank you all for watching. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. 